In this video, we're going to quickly go over how you prepare your sample for analyzing in the IR experiment. Now, basically, there are four different ways that you can use for analyzing your sample. And to begin with, you can analyze samples that are either gases, liquids, or solids. In the undergraduate teaching labs at Northwestern, we don't analyze gas samples because you need a special sample holder that can contain a gaseous sample. But we do routinely analyze samples that are liquids. Now, there are two common ways to analyze samples that are liquids. One is using what is called a salt plate, and one is using what I'll call a polymer window card. Now, the salt plate is well, its exactly what it says it is. It is a salt plate. What you're seeing here on the screen on the left are single crystals of sodium chloride. And what you do is you will place a drop of a liquid onto one of these salt plates, and then you'll get another one the same size, and you put them together like making a cookie, a cookie sandwich, and you just make a thin film of your sample. You place the salt plate into an IR sample holder, and then you pass an IR beam directly through the salt plate, therefore directly through your sample that is suspended on the salt plate, and you'll be able to register at the detector what frequencies are being absorbed by your sample on the salt plate. The salt plate does not interfere with your IR spectrum because sodium chloride is made of ionic bonds, and remember, in IR spectroscopy, we are only looking at covalent bonds. Ionic bonds do not resonate in the frequency of the IR part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, another way we could uh, do this experiment with liquid is we can use one of these polystyrene cards. And this polystyrene card is a, is a cardboard card, but down here there is a little window. And this window has a polystyrene film in the window. So again, you place a drop of your sample onto the polystyrene film. You place this in a sample holder. You pass IR light through it. And because your sample is being suspended in the window, the IR light passing through it will be affected by covalent bonds in your molecule. Now, if you do use a polystyrene film, we do have one little problem. Polystyrene is an organic compound. It has covalent bonds in it. And you might be tricked into thinking that what you're seeing um, on an IR spectrum is coming from your sample when actually it's coming from the polystyrene. So if you use the polystyrene cards, what you have to do is you have to run a background spectrum on polystyrene alone. So you take the blank card, you put it in the cell holder, and you run an IR spectrum and collect that. Then you put sample on the card, put it back and run it again, subtract out the background spectrum of pure polystyrene, and what will be left over will be the peaks from your molecule which is suspended on the polystyrene film. Now, if you have a solid sample, one of the most common ways of analyzing solids is by making what we call a KBR pellet. KBR, like sodium chloride, is again an ionic compound, and so the ionic bonds in KBR are going to be IR invisible and will not interfere with collecting an IR spectrum using it. So KBR is a very soft salt, it's a very soft solid, you put some in a mortar and pestle, grind it up so it's very, very fine. Then you toss in a little bit of your compound. I usually do it in about a, a 10 to 1 or 20 to 1 ratio of KBR to uh, compound I'm analyzing. You grind it up into a nice um, powder. Then you place the powder, as we're showing here on the right, you place that powder into a KBR dye. Um, and then using two bolts that you squeeze together. KBR is such a soft solid, you know, such a soft salt, that when you squeeze with enough pressure, it will press that KBR into a really clear window, looking just like a sodium chloride plate, and in that clear window will be suspended your compound. Again, you place the KBR dye in an IR beam, you pass the IR beam through it, and because your compound is suspended in the window, you will be able to see the IR radiation interact with your molecule suspended in the KBR window. Now at Northwestern, with the uh, large undergraduate teaching labs, we don't press KBR pellets. There's a little bit of an art to it. It is a little bit tricky. So what we do is we collect our samples on a diamond surface. This is known as ATR IR spectroscopy, where the ATR stands for attenuated total 
reflectance. This is not in your textbook, but if you look online, you might be able to find um, an entry on uh, perhaps Wikipedia that will explain this. So basically what happens is, as you can see here on the screen, we're placing some solid sample directly over a opening. And on that opening, there's a diamond. Now we're going to lower the anvil onto our sample. That's going to press our solid sample up against the diamond. And in the case of this experiment, the IR radiation is coming from below. The IR light passes through the diamond, reflects around inside the diamond, and at the surface of the diamond where the sample is being pressed up against it, the IR radiation becomes attenuated. The light reflects back down, uh, goes uh, to the uh, detector of the IR spectrometer, and so we're looking at how the beam is attenuated by the fact that there is sample on the surface of the diamond. You can also use this with liquids, and we do use this with liquids in the uh, undergraduate teaching labs at Northwestern. In that case, you would just put a single drop of your liquid sample on the diamond surface and lower the anvil to trap the drop so that it doesn't evaporate, and then go ahead and collect your spectrum. Uh, just quickly, some of the advantages of using Fourier transform IR spectroscopy over continuous wave IR spectroscopy. Well, Fourier transform is faster. It takes a couple of seconds as opposed to a couple of minutes or more to collect your IR spectrum. Also in Fourier transform, you get better resolution. And finally, and this one is to me what is most important, your data is digital, not analog. So your data can be captured, it can be stored, it can be backed up, it can be um, copied and pasted. I can go back and access IR data from years ago off uh, a backup hard drive. And also because it's digital data, I can manipulate the data on a computer screen to um, zoom in on a particular area to get a really good close look at it. Uh, whereas in continuous wave, uh, your data gets printed out on a sheet of paper with a pen. And once it's printed out, that's it. Once it's printed out on a piece of paper, you have your IR spectrum, and that is the only copy of your spectrum from that sample. So I prefer the digital data that can be manipulated and backed up that you get when you do Fourier transform IR spectroscopy.